Hey guys, Big Three Tennis here with his the Omega Effect review. Uh, I ordered this with Aries versus Richards, and uh, I'll show that I did not show you guys that I got because it was buy two get one free, eliminating the competition like two weeks ago. Because I thought this was gonna be released on the same day as Aries versus Richards. I thought that's what it said. I misread it. I called ROH, I told them to change the order, and they said, you know what, if you just stay with your order, we'll get you the Omega Effect the day it comes out, which they did, which I really do appreciate, and would have to wait till Monday like everyone else. So right now I'm going to review the Omega Effect. This is a real, I personally enjoyed the show more than the other one, but the other one is the better show, I should. I will say. I did lower the score of Aries vs. Richards from a 9.25 to a 9. I think it's the third best show of the year. The problem... The crowd did come up on DVD. I got a lot of comments from all the Detroit fans saying we were good there. We we were loud. They were loud in the main event. They were loud in... That, that's the thing. Like, Tron Honor said, I guess we were just waiting for something to happen. You were. You were loud during the three main matches. But for everything else, you just stayed silent. And I, I didn't really like that too much. But let's get on with the show. I thought the show had severe booking issues. But I'm not going to get into those. Uh, we, it's a very, very enjoyable show to watch. We start off with the Young Bucks versus the Flatliners. Really, I, I know I said we need new tag teams. The Flatliners were not that good. This, I think, is their debut match for Ring of Honor. It did not come off well. Uh, two stars. Maybe two and a quarter. The Young Bucks got hit their usual moves. The more bang for your buck. The uh, moonsault diamond cutter off the top rope. Whatever the hell that Matt Jackson does. You know, the thing where Nick Jackson goes over the ropes, does a... Does the kick through the ropes and then pulls his legs up and then guy dives over the legs. It was a fun match in that retrospect. Two and a quarter stars. I can see a lot of people really not liking this match. I can see a lot of people match giving this like a star and three quarters. But I personally did enjoy it. The Young Bucks get the win. Mm, whatever. But yeah, let's move on. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli versus Cole Cabana versus Grizzly Redbird versus Delirious. Fun fact. Claudio Castagnoli has been in four four corner survivals in the last three months of Ring of Honor. He was in final battle. He's won these. He was he won final battle. He won Clash of the Contenders, and he won the final Confident Tour Boston. I get that you should see. I'm tired of just sticking him in four corner survivals, which they've done all year. He was in the four corner survival at Supercard of Honor, I believe. He's been in four corner survivals all year. He should be higher than that. I really like Claudio, and I like how he was a main eventer towards the end of 2008, and then towards 2009 he moved to the status of upper lower mid carder. And he didn't win this, which which I'm fine with. Cabana deserved to win it because. The fact that he's fighting Aries in the next show. What I don't like is how he won. Claudio gave Delirious the UFO, the thing where he dropped his hands. And then Cabana just beat up, punched Claudio, and then he covered Delirious. I thought for Cabana to look more credible, he should look like the guy who got the win on his own. Not the guy who just snuck by and got the win. And this was not even that good of a four-corner survival. It was kind of a three-on-one match the whole match. And Claudio's the heel, so that makes no sense. It was kind of funny, the things they did with the glove. I'm going to give it two and a quarter because it was kind of funny. And Grizzly Red would hit two very nice spots that I did mark out for twice, both times. I'm going to give it two and a quarter, but really the match was nothing special at all. And I can also see a lot of people not liking this match. Let's get Rhett, Titus, and Kenny King versus my beloved Super Smash Brothers. Fucking ROH. Well, A, the Super Smash Brothers lost, which you guys know I already hate. But B, the, the audio on this match was horrible. You have to take off the commentary. I mean... You should anyways, because the commentary wasn't that good, but you can't hear it. It goes, there are problems with it, which is good, because I would recommend you listening to the crowd. The crowd in the show was amazing, I will say that. Because during this match, like, I'm not going to say, like, what they said, because I don't want to ruin it. But one guy was making fun of Rhett Titus, and Rhett Titus and Kenny King did two back-to-back -back things, making fun of that guy's girlfriend. And the crowd went insane and chanted, match of the year, match of the year. Oh! They were marking out when they said well, it was really funny. That 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 bumps it up a quarter of a star. Super Smash Bros. got in their offense. They 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 showed their entrance. Uh, but they got their moves in. They still lost though, which I'm still not a big fan of. But I understand Red Titus and Kenny King need their momentum. But here's the thing. You now are stuck with Red Titus and Kenny King and the Young Bucks by this point. Well, except for one of the teams that I'll get to later on tonight. But this is and. Right now, all they have is, I've talked about this before, Red Titus and Kenny King, The House of Truth, The Super Smash Bros. whenever they go to the Detroit, Canada area, Eric Stevens and Joey Ryan, and you have the Briscoes and the Kings of Wrestling. 
Briscoes might be going to WWE, whatever those rumors are. Kings of Wrestling are going to be in the main event a lot. So you're stuck with three teams right there. Two, only two that are credible. You really need to build up this division more. But yeah, it was an enjoyable match. Two and a half stars for the most part. So yeah, the first three matches pretty much... I, I didn't expect much from the rest of the card, but the rest of the card really picked it up. El Generico versus Nakajima. This match was great. Four and a quarter stars. It was awesome. This match just had, it had no beginning. You know, they kind of skipped the feeling out process and they went straight. I think 30 seconds into the, into the match, Nakajima hit Generico with a hard kick and they hit kicks. And I think five minutes into the match, the crowd chanted, this is awesome. And the match was around 15 minutes. So, yeah, you know, I guess if they had the feeling out process, it could have even been four and a half. It really could have added a lot to the match. I saw a lot of remnants of uh, Kenta Richards in this match. I truly believe that. This match was amazing. Four and a quarter stars. I think it's better than Nakajima's match with Omega. A lot of people are not going to agree with me on that. But I truly think that, because this had no mistakes in it. Didn't have a, it, it had a great story to it, actually. Uh, the kicks, they were each trying to hit their own kicks. El Generico kept trying to hit the Yakuza kick, and he kept missing. And Nakajima kept trying to, you know, hit these regular kicks. Fun match to watch. Four and a quarter stars. Amazing. Second best match of the night. Next we get to the most disappointing match of the night. Tyler Black versus Roderick Strong. This went to a 20-minute draw. By the way, it says Tyler Black is number two. Roderick Strong is number three. That is false. It's the other way around. This graphic is amazing, by the way. Uh, I expected a lot, lot more from this match. I thought it would be a lot better. It wasn't, unfortunately. They they did a lot of the feeling out process for like 12 minutes. And then they really hit some really nice spots towards the end. But Roderick was working on Tyler's neck throughout the whole 12 minutes. And then, of course, in the end, he was using the back the backbreakers and all that. You, you're kind of contradicting the storytelling of the match, which kind of hurt it. I'm going to give it three and a quarter, three and a half stars. It was still really good. The last seven minutes are excellent. But, you know, I thought the whole match just could have been a lot better. And it was pretty disappointing to see, in my opinion. Next to Eric Stevens and Joey Ryan versus the Briscoes. This was pretty good. Three stars. I really enjoyed this match. Well, it was given a lot of time. It was given like 14, 15 minutes. And surprisingly, Eric Stevens and Joey Ryan went over. I guess, I know, ROH does care about putting over a tag team, which they did here. Of course, it was by a roll-up. And then the Briscoes had to beat up Nana afterwards. To make themselves look a little strong. But still, it was still a win nonetheless for Eric C. And I'm glad, you know, this team's getting pushed. So, um, ROH is doing some good things in their tag team division. So, I'm not going to totally crap on their division. It was, a, it was a good match, too. I really enjoyed it. The Briscoes had some really nice spots towards the end. You know, they had their great start tag team technical wrestling that they usually do in the first five to six minutes of the match. But enjoyable match. Three stars. Next, you get to the most surprising match of the night. Kevin Steen versus Chris Hero. This was great. This was the third best match of the night. I'm going to get this three and a half, three and three quarter. The Chris Hero went for the elbow, and he hit the, the ring post, and I was like, yes, this means he's going to have to do other moves. No. He would just hit the elbow, and then, you know, it would really hurt, and he couldn't cover him. We, there was some great storytelling with it because of it. And the crowd, again, take the audio off this match because the crowd is great. They were fighting with Chris Hero. They were chanting, he's very agile. And he said, so am I. And they said, no, you're not. It was a really fun match. It was funny. They hit their spots. They had some great storytelling. I might even give it three and three quarter. I really did enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a really surprising match. It was really good. Uh, the promo that Kevin Steen cut before was so funny. So funny. You must see that promo. It was everything worked. I'm going to give it three and three quarter stars. I thought everything worked in this match. The promo was great. The comedy was great. The moves were great. The storytelling was great. It's everything you want in a professional wrestling match. But then we could say the same thing about the main event. Aries versus Omega. This match was awesome. Um, pure awesomeness. I didn't think this would top Aries Richards, but it came close. I will say that. This was really good. Got a lot of time, like 38 minutes. Not as much as Aries Richards did. They got like 50 minutes. They told their own story again. Uh, Aries worked on Omega's knee, and he just completely forgot about it towards the end. But he didn't work on it long enough. You know, like, like not, as bad, not as long as Nakajima did to Omega. He didn't work on it that much. I kind of understood. Believe it or not, the crowd was probably the story of this match. I remember Aries was taunting them. And I remember like Omega brought Aries to a kid who Aries had taunted. And the kid was punching him in the stomach. And then, uh, by the way, Isbasar and his friend were like the kings of this crowd. They started all the chants. Uh, Kenny Omega got a next world champ champ, by the way. And uh, you know about the hard cam? Like, here's the entrance. This way. They're on the left side. They're very easy. You can't miss them. Once you see the ring... Like, they're right there. And, uh, like, Kenny Aries was going to close on Omega. Omega backdropped him over to the crowd. And 
Isbisar said in his video that they picked up Ares and they threw him to the concrete, but the camera cut away. You never got to see it. You do see Ares on the concrete, which is a shame. That would have been really cool to see one of our YouTube friends uh, beat up a wrestler. But this was an awesome match. Four and a half stars. I do think Ares Richards better. It told a better story. Had a better pacing. This, this pacing was awesome, though. The crowd was amazing. Again, do not listen to the commentary, especially since Santa Maria stayed out commentary for this match. It was just great. Four and a half stars. This was a really, really, really enjoyable show. I'm going to give it an 8.75 out of 10. I still think Aries vs. Richards has better wrestling. But this is still pretty damn good. If the first three matches were a little better, I would say this is better than Aries vs. Richards. The Omega Effect. Please pick it up. It's a very, 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 very good show. It could be a 9. I don't know. I'm thinking about giving it a 9. I, I had so much fun watching from... The thing is, the first three matches, I didn't enjoy it, and I thought the show wouldn't be that good. So now, I can't go, I don't think I can go a full nine. But still, 8.75 out of 10. Pick it up, the Omega Effect. I'm Big Red 310.